Hello guys, I welcome you all to Engineers Academy. Do subscribe my channel if you haven't done it yet. Now we are going to solve this problem which says that a smooth sphere, homogeneous sphere of mass M and radius R is suspended by a wire AB of length 2R from point B. On the line of intersection of the two smooth vertical walls at right angle to one another, determine the reactions R of each wall against the sphere. So we have this smooth homogeneous sphere and it is uh, suspended from this wire. So from A to B this length is R but as we know that uh, if this sphere is suspended between these two walls and which are having uh, 90 degrees between both of them right this is uh, this wall is parallel to the y axis and this part wall is parallel to the x axis so we can consider that this wire will pass through its center right so if if this wire has a length of 2 r so if we consider the length of uh, this wire from B to the center of the sphere, to the center of gravity of the sphere, then the length of this wire will be equal to 3R, right? Since this is 2R and this is one another R. So 2R plus this R will give us 3R. So we can consider uh, this line. Let's consider this uh, uh, diagram now. Let's consider this figure now. So if I join this point B with the center of gravity of this sphere, so we will have this, uh, this length and this will be 3R. And similarly, if we look into this sphere from the top, if we look into this sphere from the top, so we will have this is the top view. And in the top view, we will be able to see the X axis and the Y axis and the Z axis is pointing out of the screen. So as we know that the radius of the sphere is r so we can say that this is r this is r so this is the projection of the wire on the xy plane so that projection is shown here right if this is that line which joins point b and the center of gravity so this is the projection of that line so if you want to find the length of this projection that will be we can find this projection by using uh, this right angle triangle and in the top we, we can use this triangle like this so this we know that this length is r and this length is r as well since this is r so if this is r this is r then this is r so we can write that this is r this is r and by using the pythagoras theorem we can find this length and let's say that the uh, the center point of the sphere is let's say represented by g so we can write that this is g right this is g so now let's first let's find this projection and this projection is shown here in the top view. So this projection will be uh, let's say that this is that point G and let's say that somewhere here is let's define these points. Let's say this is this is point G and let's say this is point C right. So let me write that this is point C. So this particular point in the figure is point C. So let's say that we have that point C here. This is that point C. So GC length is the hypotenuse. This GC is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So we can say that GC square is equal to R square plus R square by using the Pythagoras theorem. Uh, R square plus R square will give us 2R square. So this is, uh, this is 2R square and we can say that GC length the projection of the wire or uh, we can say that the projection of the line which joins point B and G is equal to square root 2R. We need to take the square root on both sides of this equation so we will have square root 2R. So now this GC which is the projection of this line is equal to square root 2R. Now as we can see that this uh, this is again the right angle triangle, the standing triangle and we can say that the triangle B, G and C, so this B, G and C is a right angle triangle. We know the length of BG, BG is, BG length is 3R and GC, we know GC. So BG is the hypotenuse of this triangle and GC is the base of this triangle. 
so we want to find this BC which is the vertical length or uh, we can say that the perpendicular of this uh, stranding triangle so by using again by using the Pythagoras theorem we can write that BG which is the hypotenuse BG square will be equal to GC square plus BC square now we want to find BC so BC square is equal to BG square minus GC square and if we take the square root we will be able to find BC length so now we can write that BG so now we know BG which is 3R so this will be 3R square minus GC is square root 2R square and then we need to take the square root so this will give us 9R square minus the square um, the square of square root 2 will be 2 so this will be 2R square so this is BC and this BC is equal to 7 R square under the square root or we can say that BC is equal to square root 7 R so now we know BC now in the problem statement we are required to determine the reaction R of each wall against the sphere so now we know that uh, this wall is going to apply the reaction force in the X direction and this wall is going to apply the reaction force in the y direction and these reaction forces must pass through the center of gravity of the sphere so now let's show those uh, let me show those uh, reactions so that reaction will be acting somewhere here like this this is that uh, let me write that this is our x since it is acting in the x direction and here we will have our y reaction so since this homogeneous sphere is in equilibrium so we can apply the summation of moment about the z-axis so if I apply the summation of moment about the z-axis this must be equals to 0 and again we have to show the weight so the weight of this sphere is going to act vertically downward this will be the weight and this weight can be written as mg and we will have the tension in that row so the tension in that row will be acting from g to b so now if we apply the summation of moment about the z-axis so as we can see that uh, this tension in the rope is intersecting with the z-axis so the tension in the rope is not going to produce the moment about the z-axis similarly this weight of the sphere this is uh, this is parallel to the z-axis so it's not going to produce the moment about the z-axis so only our x and our y they are going to produce the moment about the z-axis so now our x is producing the moment about the z-axis in this direction and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the downward direction so this means that our x is producing the clockwise moment so we will write minus R x and the perpendicular distance of this R x from the z axis is, is this length and this length is equal to R this is R right so we need to multiply this with R so the moment arm of R x from the z axis is, is equal to R similarly this this R y is going to produce the moment about the z axis in this direction and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so the thumb will point out in the upward direction so this means that our x our y is producing the counterclockwise moment about the z axis so i will write plus r y and the perpendicular distance of this r y from the z axis is this length which is equal to the radius of the sphere again so we will multiply this with r and this is equal to 0 if you people are not clear about the perpendicular distance of our x and our y we can show uh, that our x and our y and this top we so in the top view uh, here we will have our x and here we will have our y so the perpendicular distance of our x from the z axis is, is this distance which is r and the perpendicular distance of our y from the z axis is again equal to r so now this is equal to 0 and from this if i bring uh, this r y term to the other side of equation so we will have minus uh, r r x equals to minus r r y so minus r and minus r will cancel out so we will be left with r x is equal to r y so now from the summation of moment about z axis we come to the conclusion that both the walls are applying uh, same reaction on the sphere 
now if if I draw an axis at point B let's say if I draw an axis parallel to the x axis let's say if we have an axis somewhere here let's say let's say that we have an axis at point B which is parallel to the x axis let's say this axis is and let's say this axis is x dash and similarly if I draw one another axis which is parallel to the y axis let's say let's say this is this is y dash now if we apply the summation of moment about the as x dash axis so the summation of the moment about the x dash axis this must be equals to zero since the homogeneous sphere is in a, is an equilibrium but as we can see that uh, the tension in this cord or cable is again passing through that point b and the x dash axis is also passing through this point b so we can say that the tension in the rope is intersecting with the x dash axis so this tension in the rope is not going to produce the moment about the x dash axis and similarly this and g the weight which is acting vertically downward is producing the moment about the x dash axis this r y is producing the moment about the x dash axis and this r x is parallel to the x dash axis so it's not going to produce the moment about the x dash axis so only m g and r y they are going to produce the moment about the x dash axis so now as we can see that this r y is going to produce the moment about the x dash axis in this direction and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so our thumb will point out in this direction so this means that our y is producing the counterclockwise moment about the x dash axis so i will write plus r y and the perpendicular distance of r y or we can say that the moment arm of r y from x dash axis is, is this distance and this distance is equal to b c and b c is square root 7 into r so we can say that this is we can say that uh, plus square root 7 into r into r y and as we can see that this mg is producing the moment about the x dash axis in this direction or we can say that it is producing the moment about the x dash in this direction and if we curl our right hand fingers in this direction so our thumb will point out in the negative x dash direction so it's going to produce the clockwise moment about the x dash axis so i will write minus mg and the perpendicular distance of uh, this mg vector from the x dash axis is, is this distance which is equal to the radius of the sphere so we will multiply this with r and this is equal to zero so now if we divide this whole equation by r so this r will cancel out this will cancel out we will be left with square root 7 r y minus mg equals to 0 or we can say that ry is equal to mg divided by square root 7 and as we have concluded by applying the summation of moment about z axis that our x is equal to ry so we can say that our x is equal to our y is equal to mg divided by square root 7 so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning